Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Now, um, we're still trying to do two puzzles a day for now and um, Simon did one earlier today um, that was called 44 and themed on the number 44. Now, I'm going to beat that completely because I'm doing a puzzle themed on a much more important number. There, I said it. Um, this one comes from a math major called Thomas Bowie who was inspired when he saw our first taxicab puzzle. And he remembered the story about um, the mathematician Ramanujan, a maths prodigy from India, who was able to prove all kinds of things in number theory, or to at least understand them, without having access to Western papers and traditional math studies. Anyway, later in his life, Ramanujan um, moved to England and studied at Oxford uh, with G. H. Hardy, another very famous mathematician. Um, and once the story goes, when Ramanujan was very ill, Hardy visited him in his rooms and um, for want of anything else to say, he couldn't really think of anything to interest Ramanujan with. And he mentioned that the uh, taxi that had come in had the number 1729, a very uninteresting number. Ramanujan immediately said, not at all, my dear Hardy. 1,729 is the lowest number that can be the sum of two different cubes in two different ways. And the idea that somebody just knew that without thinking about it is incredible to most of us. Um, the number has since become the Hardy Ramanujan number. And Thomas has used it in this puzzle. He's also incorporated, I think 1887 is uh, Ramanujan's year of birth. So those are the givens. Now those numbers 1729, because they were the numbers of the taxi, they are the taxi cab numbers in this puzzle. And I will remind you what a taxi cab number is. It means that um, that number can never be placed in a position in which the shortest distance orthogonally between two identical digits is that number. So this seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, cannot have a seven here or here or here or here because they would all be at the shortest distance by taxi, as it were, seven away from this seven. So these cells can't contain seven. That's the taxi cab rule. And just to repeat, the numbers 1729 all obey the taxi cab rule. Now, the two um, sums of cubes involved, I think, are 10 cubed and 9 cubed make 1729, and 12 cubed and 1 cubed. And you can correct me on that if I've got the maths wrong. I'm doing that from memory, not by maths. So, 10 and 12 are the two highest numbers, and we've got a kind of XV puzzle where X, every time X appears, or rather every time two cells next to each other, horizontally or vertically, sum to 10, there is an X. Every time two cells horizontally or vertically sum to 12, the other higher of the two cubes, we get a V. Now normally in an XV Sudoku, X is 10 and V is 5. In this puzzle, V is 12, X is 10. Now the negative constraint can be very important. There's no X or V between those two cells, so they don't sum to 10 or 12. Finally, we have the diagonal lines, which show that this is a diagonal Sudoku as well. So it's a kind of diagonal XV taxicab Sudoku, <laughs> which is a fascinating mix, but I hope we can uh, get all those rules understood as we solve the puzzle. I'm sorry we don't yet have the ability to write them on the um, user interface when we supply the puzzle in, in our software. So you're going to have to memorize them, but you kind of have to memorize them to solve the puzzle anyway. So that's what we've got. Um, do feel free, if you think you can memorize those rules, to um, try the puzzle on our interface on the link below the video. Otherwise, feel free to just watch my attempt at this puzzle. So, let's get cracking. Um, now, 
happily, there's a lot of XVs provided and a couple of the givens are on them. So V means a sum of 12. So we can just fill in four there and five there. X means a sum of 10. So we can fill in six because those add up to 10. So we get a nice little star. And in fact, look down this column, there's two more Vs. There are three sums possible to get to 12, three, nine, four, eight, and five, seven. So those ones must use three, nine, and five, seven. So, okay, the other two cells in the column must be two and one. And this one can't be a two because it's on an X and would need an eight. So that's the one. This must be nine. That makes this three. And down here, it's a five, seven pair. Fine, so that's a good start. One column done and not much trouble about it, but what else can we find? One and one there, so one has to be down here somewhere. Obviously, if it's in one of these two cells, it's with a nine, but it could be on the diagonal. Ah. Uh, Okay, sometimes it helps to look at boxes with a lot of material in them, but 10 isn't the best sum for this. Ah, oh, no, okay, up here. Yeah, okay, I'm going to start here with this sum. This, can't, this is a sum of 10. Actually, there's one here as well in row 4. They can't be 3 and 7, and they can't be 8 and 2, because the 8s are given in the row. So these must be... 1 and 9 and 6 and 4. That must similarly be one of those because it's another 10 sum because that can't be 1, that can't be 9, that can't be 1. So we are reducing those a bit. Now this is interesting. In this, in box 2 here, all of those 6 digits are in 10 sums. Now there are 4 possible 10 sums. 1, 9, 2, 8, 3, 7 and 4, 6. What that means because the five isn't in one of those 10 sums, is that apart from the five and those other four cells, the or those other six cells, sorry, the other two cells in the box must also add up to 10, uh, because they must be the other pair that adds up to 10. So we've got nine, six, or four there. This must be one, four, or six. We can see from that four, it's not a four. So that's not a six. That's not a four, that's not a six. Ah, it doesn't finish it off, annoyingly. Now there are two cells left in row four. They are two and five. Hmm. Okay, now I've forgotten to think much, as usual, about one of the constraints. The diagonal's not very useful yet, I don't think, but that taxi cab constraint now, it only operates on ones, which is actually useless because by Sudoku rules, anything that is one away from a one couldn't be a one anyway, just by ordinary Sudoku. But it also operates on twos, sevens, and nines. Now, for this two, that means this can't be two. Also, this can't be two because otherwise that would be a pair that added to ten. So 2 has to be over this side um, of that box. Oops, that's not what I meant to be doing. I meant to be putting it in the corner to show that. Now that means that the 2 in box 1 has to be in column 3. It can't be here because it would be next to an 8. So it must be one of those two. Um, and that's of limited use, to be honest, at the moment. Now 2s, okay, what about 7s? Ah, yeah, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Bam. By the taxi cab rule, these two can't both be sevens because that would be seven distance away from there. So that one is a five. So that gives us something straight away. Now we get another seven. So what can we do with sevens? Right, this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it always forms a kind of diagonal pattern around the grid. I'm actually, hmm, there's not much point in coloring those. I'm gonna color all those cells, just so I've got an idea where there can't be another seven. 
Now this seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there, there's a whole bunch more of cells that can't be seven. So none of those orange cells can, or well, that one already is, but none of the orange cells can be another seven. And look, the diagonal now comes in. That seven's on the diagonal. So all of those can't be seven either. Actually, so can those not be seven. So up here, we've got a seven in one of those two. And down in box nine, we've actually got a useful seven in one of those two, presumably. Um, I might leave the colouring in for now while I just think about this. Well, have we got anything else? Oh, well, look, five and seven already in this column. And this, this is another 12 sum. So it's three, nine or four, eight. And that's on a 12 sum with that. So that's three, nine or four, eight. I guess the 10 thing means this could be seven, six, not two, but one is possible. Ah, I should have had a look at this before. So two is not possible. So those can't be eight. And that can't be four, therefore. Yeah, this is getting quite interesting. This must be nine, four. No, this is a 12 sum. Ah, so that can't be one. In fact, it can't be six either. That's got to be seven. That's five. These two are three, and that is nine. So actually, we've got great progress. That gives us that as a four. Six, four, and that seven has fixed the sevens. Yes, yes. Okay, so let's take out that seven. Um, now my choice is either to use these two sevens and try and finish off sevens, or actually just see where this takes me now. Maybe I'll leave the coloring in for now. I might take it out in a minute if this gets us some way. So that seven has got an X here, so that's a three. That's got a V, so this is a nine for the 12 sum. Now, here in this box, we've got two more 10 sums. They must be two, eight, and six, four. In fact, look, it's a given they involve the four, and we've got those two fours. We can place the four, six. That's two, eight. There's a one here with a nine and a one there. And now suddenly everything is getting a lot easier. That's a three. This is an eight. It's a naked single now. We've got six and four here. That must be another one because that's a 10 sum. Um, I think this is getting quite a lot easier now. One nine in that row. That must be an eight now. Two there. I'm going to take out all the coloring now. I don't think it's going to be necessary and frankly it's just messing up the grid at the moment so let's go back to white okay now we've got four six here and that works oh look fours on the diagonal so I, th I mean I think from this point we're prob we've probably got lots of information we could attack the puzzle in very many ways which you know some purists might see that six is on the diagonal. Might see as a demerit, but I actually like it about a puzzle. That's an eight naked single. That can't be five and seven. So one of them's a six. That's six or five. Uh, oh, that can't be five. So that's six or seven. Can't be five because it's on a ten sum. Three or four there. Ah, oh, that two has proved this as a five. So we can put in two at the other end. Five, six, and seven to go in. That's five or seven. That can't be six, so that's five or seven. Interesting little pattern forming there. Let's try the diagonals. Three, seven, four, nine, six. Um, that can't be eight or two on the other diagonal. So it's one or five, can't prove either way. What about this diagonal? Four, seven, eight, two, six. Three has to go on it somewhere. Got to be here because that sees that cell at the bottom. Manage my scanning all the way down. 
9 is up here and it can't be here because we'd need an X between those two. So it goes there. So that finishes off the diagonal. Now we've got 1, 8, 2 on the other diagonal and they can just go straight in based on the 1, 8 and the 8 there. Brilliant. 9, 4, 6. So we've got 5, 2, 7 to place up here. Oh no, let's finish off row 3. That's very straightforward. That gives us a couple of X's that we can just do. Um, 5, 4, 9. That's just ordinary Sudoku there. 1, 5, 4, 9, 6. This must be 2, 8 because there's a 3, 7 pointing straight at that cell. So that's 2, 8. This is 7. 3, 7, 6 there, 4, 5 and 2, um, something might tell, yes, 5 and 7 would need a mark, so it must be 2, 5, 7, that's five, uh, 5 and 6, that's 6 and 7, so we can put in the 3, and now we're just finishing off, so this turned into quite a straightforward exercise once the kind of early breakthrough was made um, and nonetheless enjoyable for that as I said but that beginning was quite interesting so thank you very much to Thomas for sending that through I mean not too tough in the end interesting start love the chance to tell the Ramanujan story anyway I mean that deserves always a wider audience if you knew it uh, thank you for bearing with me if you didn't how could you not find that interesting? It's one of the best math stories there is. So there we go. Thank you very much for watching and hope to see you again soon on Cracking the Cryptic. Bye for now.